You ever made a mistake so big that you didn't think you'd be able to fix it? Like, say, a thousand dollar mistake? Let's fix those expensive Disney World mistakes before they happen here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now, today's video is all about saving you not just a little money here and there, but saving you lots of money on your Disney World flights, your park tickets, your food, you name it. It may be your first trip to Disney World, it may be your 10th, or you might have lost count. But whatever the case may be, learn from these mistakes to save yourself and your bank account from costly heartache. So let's start with a major money saver that starts before you enter Disney World property. And this is something that a lot of people do not think about. Is the airport nearest to you trying to outturn your pockets and ransack your vacation funds? You're not the first traveler personally victimized by your airport, nor will you be the last. Unfortunately, prices for flights are extremely high everywhere right now, especially as we start to enter into the holiday season. So it's not uncommon to see airline tickets start pushing into that $600 plus range depending on where you're traveling from and where you're traveling to. But here's the positive spin you might be desperately trying to find. You don't have to settle with the airport closest to you. See how many airports exist within that 100 mile radius from your house and build yourself a little airport scavenger hunt game. Check out prices for different airlines across these different airports. Just because a Delta or American Airlines flight is a certain price at the airport closest to you doesn't mean it's going to be the same pricing across the board at other airports. Let's say I was trying to fly into the Orlando International Airport, aka MCO, out of California around the beginning of December. So like I'd fly out December 1st and get a return flight for December 8th. To make sure I'm getting the best deal I can, I'm going to compare two of California's airports, Los Angeles International and Hollywood Burbank. For LAX, you got a whole lot of options to choose from, so I can find flights as cheap as $214 for a round trip if I go the budget Spirit Airlines route. American Airlines will be your next cheapest option here, starting at $324 per round trip. For Burbank, you've got fewer options. You can still find a Spirit flight for, at cheapest, $249. Your cheapest option for an American Airlines flight hops up to $485. And if you're flying Delta, your cheapest option over in LAX is going to cost $348, while the Burbank Delta flights will only go as low as $562. And you can use apps to help you track down the most affordable flights for the airports you're looking to travel into, whether that be toward Orlando or somewhere else entirely. And who knows, if you're traveling to Disney World, you may even find that the main Orlando International Airport doesn't have as cheap of flights as another airport in the Orlando area like Sanford International or Melbourne Orlando. So keep your options open, but also keep in mind that MCO is the official airport for Disney and is the only one with Mirrors Connect and Sunshine Flyer shuttle systems available for you to use, which will take you directly to your Disney World Resort for an extra cost. Now, when you do find a flight that'll work for you, make sure to sign up for that airline's travel program to earn miles, which you can collect and later redeem for future flights if, you know, you happen to be going back to Disney World every once in a while. That being said, don't box yourself into just choosing one particular airline each and every time you travel. Because even if, say, Spirit has cheaper flights than Breeze the first time around, it may be the flip opposite next time. It's always a good idea to be open to all the different airline options at all times. And it's also good to sign up for memberships for several different airlines, too, so you don't have to worry about losing travel credits whenever you fly with someone else. Most airlines will have free memberships for you to join, but always read up on those terms and agreements before sealing that deal. I know, I glaze over them too, but that doesn't mean they're not going to tell you something important that you'll want to know before signing up. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Yes, you. Why? Because some of the ways you can end up losing a lot of money boils down to giving up way too early. There are times when leaving the parks a little earlier are totally A-OK. -okay. If a little one in your group, for instance, needs an afternoon nap and won't take one in their stroller, you may have to backtrack to the hotel for an hour or so for a quick recharge. Or if you want to try out a nearby table service restaurant at one of the hotels just outside the park, you may have to slip out for a nice lunch, then come back when you're full and refuel. But you don't want to abandon the parks prematurely. That's a way to lose money. There are times when leaving the parks is equivalent to throwing up the white flag when there's no battle to begin with. And that's when it's storming. 
Orlando is really good at serving up afternoon storms, but that doesn't mean you need to run for the hills as soon as the rain starts. While you're waiting for the storm to pass in each park, here are a few activities you can do to pass the time. In Magic Kingdom, catch one of the indoor shows like Carousel of Progress, Country Bears, Enchanted Tiki Room, Hall of Presidents. These are going to give you a chance to get off your feet and into air conditioning for a bit as well. You can also shop around the Main Street USA stores. The best thing about these shops is that they're super close together. If you're over in the Emporium, it's literally the entire block that's all connected so you don't ever have to go outside. See if you can catch a rainy day cavalcade as well. The weather isn't too intense and just a little drizzly. The rainy day cavalcade will make its rare appearance down Main Street USA featuring cast members in raincoats and a few popular characters that aren't afraid of a little rain. Over in Epcot, you can browse the different gift shops around the World Showcase. Often, the DFB reporters and I will take this opportunity to thoroughly explore the Mitsukoshi department store in the Japan Pavilion, which we love and always want to spend more time in, but we can't because we got to get moving and get stuff done. Now that connects to a little kawaii pop culture museum at the very back of the extensive shop, and that's also super fun to go check out. The China Pavilion also has quite the lengthy shop where you can kill some time called House of Good Fortune. And of course, Epcot's flagship store, the Creations Shop, has a ton of room to spread out and check out all the different Epcot-specific goodies. Not to mention, Club Cool is right next door and you don't have to go out in the rain to get there. You can also eat a great sit-down meal in Epcot while it's raining. Even if you didn't make reservations for a restaurant ahead of time because you were wanting to rely on the festival food booths to feed you, it's very possible you'll find a last-minute walk-up reservation for one of the Epcot. Epcot restaurants. Just check the tip dining board on your My Disney Experience app and see if there's a day of reservation you can snag or go to the reservations that are available now and you could just join a walk-up wait list right there. That way you can also wait out the worst of the storm in a nice Disney dining room and enjoy a very tasty meal. You can also explore Sea Base Alpha. Not only is Sea Base where you're going to find the seas with Nemo and Friends Dark Ride, but you'll also get to see a full-on aquarium exhibit with hundreds of sea creatures. You can participate in a free scavenger hunt as well. Just pick up one of the Finding Dory's Friends booklets on the first floor. You can ask a cast member to help you find one if you're having trouble, but it should be out in the middle of the main area, easy to spot. Also in Sea Base is Turtle Talk with Crush, and that's always a fun show to go check out. Bonus, if you aim your visit for around 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., you'll be there just in time for the fish feedings, and that is fun to see. In Animal Kingdom, you can ride Kilimanjaro Safaris. This is a great time to ride when it's raining just a little bit. Now, if the weather is brutal, then no, you're probably not going to want to do this. But if there are light showers happening, it's a great time to hit up the outdoor safari ride because lots of those animals out on the savanna will be way more active and alert than they will be when the sun is beating down and they're trying to find shade. You can also see a live performance. Animal Kingdom has two epic indoor shows you're not going to want to miss whether it's raining or not. The first is Finding Nemo, the Big Blue and Beyond, which uses advanced puppetry alongside catchy show tunes to showcase Pixar's fishy film franchise in a whole new way. And the second is Festival of the Lion King, which also uses puppetry. But even more than that, this cast of talented performers are going to sing and dance and tumble to classic songs straight from the Lion King soundtrack. You can also have a drink at Nomad Lounge. I will cop to sitting in Nomad Lounge for a couple of hours at a time before. Very few things are more peaceful than having a cocktail and maybe a snack or two while on the covered patio of Nomad when it's raining. You don't need reservations to get into Nomad Lounge, but you will need to get on the walk-up wait list. Nomad Lounge opens at 11 a.m. each day, but you want to get in line earlier to get your name on the list ASAP because this little lounge can get really busy during the day. And in Disney's Hollywood Studios, take a self-guided tour through the Walt Disney Presents Gallery and Exhibit. Here you're going to be able to explore the history of Walt Disney's career through art, dioramas, and rare artifacts. You can also catch a 15-minute documentary featuring the life and career of Walt himself. Or you may be able to see the first 15 minutes of the newest Disney film instead before it's released in theaters. Check out an indoor show as well. Performances like Indiana Jones' Epic Stunt Spectacular may be partially covered, but since this stage itself is exposed to the elements, several performances may have to be cut from the schedule during wet conditions to keep performers safe. But that doesn't mean there aren't shows in the park that'll run whether the sun's shining or not. Try shows that take place 100% inside theaters like the Frozen Sing-Along Celebration, Vacation Fun in the Mickey Shorts Theater, and Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. 
You can also have a dance party. If you got little ones who need to get their wiggles out while waiting for the storm to pass, check out the Disney Junior Play and Dance Celebration over at the Animation Courtyard. Make sure to check the Disney World website for showtimes on that one. Again, these are just a few of the options you can try out during an afternoon rainstorm, but the most important thing to remember is don't call your Disney day quits when things start looking dreary. Otherwise, all that money you put toward those tickets for the whole group is going to go down the drain. It's not worth it. Stick it out, because as soon as that rainstorm is over, those lines are going to diminish. Everybody left during the rain, so you get to ride stuff with a lot shorter waits definitely worth sticking it out. But then again, having to leave the parks earlier than you would have liked isn't always a ball that's in your court. Sometimes it's Disney's fault. Another mistake that costs a lot of money is getting kicked out of the parks prematurely. Now, I'm not talking about you decided to scatter some ashes in Haunted Mansion or anything like that. I'm talking about park hours. Magic Kingdom's after hours holiday parties can be a grand old time, but in order to participate in all the fun, you're gonna need a separate event ticket aside from your regular single day park ticket. And if you don't get one, you're gonna get kicked out of the parks. Now, getting a separate ticket means you'll be basically paying for two park tickets for a single day if you decide to double up, since like very merry Christmas party prices range between $149 and $199 per person, which is more than a park ticket costs. Now, you don't have to pay double the ticket price on party nights if you don't want to. You can always stick with paying for one or the other, but if you just pay for the single day park ticket and decide to skip out on the party price, Magic Kingdom's gonna make you leave at 6 p.m. That's like four hours less than you'd usually have in Magic Kingdom on a normal day for the same ticket price. And that means you're gonna have to head out while it's still light outside. Fortunately, not every night is a party night in Magic Kingdom during this time of year, and you can always plan around the party by checking out the Disney World Park calendar on their website, figuring out what days of the week will offer normal park hours, meaning you're gonna get a full like eight to 10 or eight to 11 time frame. You're gonna get to see the fireworks and all that's gonna be included in your original park ticket. Now, if you still want to hit up Magic Kingdom on a party day, because that's just the most convenient day on your schedule, you may want to upgrade your ticket to a park hopper. That way, once you have to leave Magic Kingdom at six, you can hop over to another park that'll stay open longer and still have their nighttime spectaculars going on, like Disney's Hollywood Studios or Epcot. You could also go on the opposite approach and just get a party ticket instead of a regular day ticket. Even though the party officially kicks off at seven, party guests are still able to enter the parks as early as 4 p.m. And if you are heading to Magic Kingdom to embrace all that festive cheer, then you may want a super cool festive shirt to go along with it. Good thing we've got those in stock on the DFB Store website. We've got not so ugly sweaters of Cinderella Castle and Sleeping Beauty Castle, and a new design that features a list of everything we love about Main Street USA at the holiday season. So yep, if you do decide to go to one of the parties, sleep in, take the day off, go into the party at 4 p.m., you'll still get eight hours worth of time in the park, and don't forget to pick up your DFB holiday shirt to wear while you're there. Now, since we're in party mode right now, let's talk about another huge money waster that could potentially happen in the midst of all the celebrating. Magic Kingdom has two ultra popular castle dining experiences. The first is Cinderella's Royal Table, set in the Cinderella Castle in the center of the park. And the second is Be Our Guest Restaurant, which takes you inside the Beast's Castle within New Fantasyland. These restaurants are gorgeous, absolutely stunning, so much so that you'll want to put them on your Disney World bucket list to at least experience once. The only problem, reservations for both of these can be hard to secure. Within seconds of reservations going live each day for the guests trying to make advanced dining reservations 60 days before their trip, they'll be snatched up before you have the chance to say, try the gray stuff, it's delicious. So Disney's come up with this brilliant alternative. If you get a ticket for one of the holiday parties, you'll also be able to book a reservation for either of these popular restaurants during the party. That way you're practically guaranteed a seat in either dining room. Yeah, only here's the big problem. Both of these restaurants are super expensive and expensive dining takes time. So your entire meal is probably gonna at least be an hour long to experience it fully, and that's fine, but you paid to be at a holiday party, and the holiday party specific shenanigans are only gonna last five hours. So do you really wanna spend $144 to $199 per party ticket to pay more money for a pricey meal that'll end up costing you $67 per person and an hour or more of your party time? 
Now, if this is your one and only trip to Disney World and you absolutely need to visit one of these restaurants, then this is a decent method for doing so. You hit up the holiday party, you book a reservation, bam, you're in. Just keep in mind that for a family of four with two adults and two kids, you're looking at paying around $212, not including tax and tip, for just the restaurant experience. You add the party prices on top of that and you could find yourself spending $788, $988 on a single night in Magic Kingdom. But for any other circumstance, don't waste your party time and money like that. There are so many different exclusive snacks available during these parties, you don't need to worry about booking an entire sit-down meal. You'll also get free cookies and hot cocoa throughout the night at Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, so again, you're not going to starve. But what about the castle restaurants? How will you get to experience those without your holiday party leg up? Well, Disney World Advanced Dining Reservations usually drop on the website around 6 a.m. Eastern, but sometimes they drop a little earlier, around 5.45 Eastern. So if you want a better chance at snagging those reservations, make sure you're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and on the Disney World website around this time to improve your chances of getting a table secured. And while you're booking these restaurants, try searching for availability during non-peak dining time. So don't be looking up lunchtime reservations at noon or dinner time reservations at six, since those will be the first time slots to go. Instead, look into reservations between 2 and 4 p.m. for a late lunch or an early dinner or maybe 10.30 a.m. for a breakfast. These reservations will still go quick, but they'll go less quickly than those peak dining time slots, which could help you buy some time. And now this next tip is really, really important if you want to dine at one of these locations. Do not forget about the dining tip board on your My Disney Experience app. Just last week, I was in Magic Kingdom and I was like, oh, I want to eat somewhere. I wonder what's available. I went into the book a reservation and I clicked the now button and Be Our Guest actually popped up every time I looked. So I think there's a lot more opportunity to get into that restaurant last minute than people think there is. So even if you don't get an advanced dining reservation, that doesn't mean a random walk-up opportunity won't pop up out of the blue when you're at Magic Kingdom, which could happen if another group ends up canceling their reservation or if Disney kind of holds a few tables separate for people that are at the park that day. Now, this isn't guaranteed to happen, but it does happen. So check your dining tip board, go into book a reservation and click the now button. See if you've hit the last minute reservation jackpot on the day of your visit. So scoring an advanced dining reservation that you've really been wanting to try can feel like a major accomplishment and it is, but you might start to think differently when you're on vacation. It's hard to come up with an average cost for Disney World sit-down restaurants, mainly because there are so many factors to consider. Is it gonna be a table or signature experience? If it's gonna be a prefix or a la carte menu, if there's gonna be characters or no characters, all of those will affect the price tag. What I will say though, is that if you're expecting to get the usual, like a soda fountain drink and a main entree for every meal, you'll more than likely be spending at least $35 per adult at these locations, minimum. This will be more common at table service restaurants like Skipper Canteen in Magic Kingdom or Yak and Yeti in Disney's Animal Kingdom. But some dinner menus like Space 220 in Epcot and California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort, those are gonna come in on the higher end of the spectrum with set prices like $79 to $89 per guest. And then there's Monsieur Paul at Epcot and Victorian Alberts over at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, and those take you into the triple digit range per person. These aren't really the dining norms or anything, they're so ultra classy. So those who are choosing to dine there probably know what they're getting themselves into. But whether you're paying $35 or $65 or even $105 per person, which can easily happen even if you go to a regular table service restaurant and you want an appetizer and a dessert on top of your entree and your alcoholic drink, that could definitely run you a hundred bucks. There are three universal truths for every Disney World restaurant. One, they all take time to experience. Two, they're all very filling. And three, they're all gonna add up real quickly. And that's why panic booking multiple table service restaurants for a single day is not the greatest idea ever, and it will cost you a lot of money. Even at $35 minimum for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's still $105 per day for one person. And after four days of that, you're not only gonna be out 420 bucks per person, but you're also gonna be stuffed and sucking hours of time away from 
from your precious park days. Soon enough, table service restaurants won't feel like a fun, unique break, but rather a chore that you have to do every four to five hours because, hey, you got the reservations. No backing out now. So to avoid table service burnout, pick two to three meals you know for sure you want to make reservations for during your week at Disney World and leave the rest up to fate. And by fate, I mean quick service meals and snacky food items that you pack in your park bag to avoid spending all that extra dough when you can avoid it. Or if you really want to do a table service restaurant, and you don't have a reservation for one, go ahead and do the thing I mentioned in the last point. Go to book a reservation and then see what's available right now. There will be probably several walk-up waitlist options that you can choose from. Now, Disney's counter service or fast food locations have a huge variety of options. We've got lots of recommendations for you here on the YouTube channel, on the blog. You know, we go to these places over and over and over again so we can make sure you have the most up-to-date review. And if you do decide to rely on some fast food locations, you won't have to worry about getting the same old thing at every fast food stop or worry about paying over $35 per person per meal for that matter. By the way, we have a really good video that's basically all about the best fast food in Disney World and it's really surprisingly excellent if you find the right places. So go check out that video. Now, whether you're wanting to know about which sit-down restaurants should be part of your three golden choices or you're wanting to know which quick service and fast food locations you should be adding, you're going to get the most detailed look into each particular place on property with our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining. That's over at dfbstore.com. Our guides have a section to help you start budgeting for meals for your trip, and you can visualize what you'll be spending in total on food and drinks, and you'll know how to save up accordingly. Okay, so now let's look at the big money waster on the opposite side of the equation. Instead of going to too many restaurants, you could experience less than you intended. All right, the next mistake that costs you $1,000 in Disney World is arriving late, even a little bit, to an expensive meal. There's a reason you want to make sure you're confident in the Disney dining reservations that you make. Because if you decide the day before your reservation you're just going to be a no-show or you arrive at the restaurant past your return window, you'll have to pay a $10 no-show fee for every person under the dining reservation who failed to show up. And canceling a reservation within the day you're supposed to go is not an option. But canceling before that time won't penalize you whatsoever. You just have to decide not to go before it's too late. Otherwise, you're going to be forced to show up regardless or pay the price. Now, I know that sounds dramatic, but when you have four people under your reservation and you wind up paying 40 bucks just to not eat somewhere, it can be frustrating beyond belief. But a couple of no-shows here and there aren't going to cost you hundreds of dollars unless you keep doing that. And if that's the case, then stop doing that. But a no-show or a late arrival at a nice restaurant that takes your payment in full before the day of your arrival is a whole other story. A couple of popular restaurants like Cinderella's Royal Table, Hoop Dee Doo Musical Review at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort, those will ask for a deposit payment up front to secure your reservation. Just like any other Disney restaurant, they've got a one-day cancellation policy. Sometimes they have a 48-hour cancellation policy, meaning you can still cancel before that window and receive a full refund. But if you don't make that cancellation on time and you end up skipping out on a meal that you've already paid for, then according to Disney policy, full price will be charged and forfeited. So considering hoop de doo prices range between $66 and $74 per guest, and Cinderella's Royal Table falls into that range too, you're looking at being charged a whole lot more than just $10 for playing hooky. For a family of four here, you could wind up losing $210 to $236. Not exactly a thousand, but it can feel like it, especially when it adds up to a whole lot of nothing. But it's not just select Disney restaurants with these stricter no-show policies. It's the specialty behind-the-scenes tours as well. But policies for the tours can be even stricter than the restaurants. Take a look at the Keys to the Kingdom tour, for instance, which will give you a five-hour backstage experience inside the Magic Kingdom at a cost of $114 per person, not including your single-day park ticket. On the Keys to the Kingdom main page on the Disney World website, you're going to notice that, yeah, you can still cancel a tour in advance to get a full refund, but instead of a one-day policy, it's a two-day policy. So if you don't cancel your spot on that tour before that 48-hour window, you're going to be charged full price for the experience of nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. You're not going to go, and you're still going to have to pay for it. All this to say, when you prepay for any of these reservations, keep in mind that you won't be able to back out at the last minute. Once you're in, you're in. If you do cancel your reservations before you visit, do so with plenty of advance notice. You need to wait three to five business days before your refund is back in your account. So don't panic if you don't see your money immediately. It does take a few days to process, but make sure you know and understand the cancellation policies for everything you're booking in Disney World. That also includes 
your flights, your hotels, etc., etc. Now, to avoid having to pay a full no-show fee for accidentally arriving late, make sure you get to your tour or restaurant early, like maybe 30 minutes before your tour and 15 minutes before your reservation window opens for a restaurant. And if you're already in the park or hotel where the reservation's located, then easy. All you gotta do is walk on over when it's time. However, if you're at another location on Disney World property that's much further away from where your reservation's gonna take place, Factor in about 60 to 90 minutes of travel time just in case. We all think we can get that last ride on Splash Mountain before our dining reservation over in Epcot. Maybe you can, but please gauge that time correctly. Splash Mountain's a long ride. And taking Disney's complimentary bus services from place to place could slow you down a lot. Factor in waiting for the bus, taking your seat, traveling, then having to enter wherever you're trying to get to, which may also require security checks and ticket scans. And if you're going to Epcot, you may have to cross the whole park. All of that time adds up, so don't try pushing your luck and hoping for the best. In the end, even if transportation does get you to your destination faster than that allotted 60 to 90 minutes you gave yourself, it's still better to show up way early than miss your meal or tour entirely. And if you're running behind and you don't have enough time to potentially wait over an hour for a Disney bus to show up, then go ahead and consider booking a rideshare to help get you to your destination faster. Now, last minute restaurant and tour cancellations are gonna cost you a pretty penny, but there are still other Disney no-show expenses that'll treat you and your bank account much worse. Let's talk about canceling your whole trip. Needing to cancel all your big Disney plans is sad anyways, but it can be an extra kick in the pants if you've got to cancel things at the last minute. For your Disney hotel stay and hotel stay only, you can cancel with no payment penalty up to five days before the first day of your stay if you have booked a room only reservation, not a package. If you don't cancel within this window of time, you won't get back your hotel deposit, meaning you'll have to pay for your first night's room whether you stay there or not. So let's say a family of four with two adults, two kids, ends up not canceling their hotel stay for a theme park view room in the outer building of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa for what was supposed to be a five night stay at the beginning of December. Having to pay for that first night is still gonna set them back $1,076 just for not canceling their room ahead of time. But if the reason you have to cancel in the first place has something to do with, say, a flight being canceled, try modifying your hotel room for a later date or still plan on calling to speak with a guest services cast member about a potential plan B. Now for park tickets, it doesn't matter whether you're trying to cancel them at the last minute or five days out or even five months out, it's just not gonna happen. Once you buy your Disney World tickets, they're yours. No refunds, no negotiations. But much like a hotel day, you should still be able to modify your tickets for a later date. Your ticket's expiration window won't start ticking until after they're first redeemed. And if your ticket does end up expiring before you're able to use all the days for it, you may be able to use those expired tickets toward future park ticket purchases, just as long as those future park dates are less than or equal in value to the expired ones. Again, definitely call or use the online chat in the Disney World website to talk to a guest services cast member about your options. For vacation packages, which bundle room and ticket prices together, you'll have to cancel that reservation within 30 days of the first day of your stay for a 100% refund. For cancellations made two to 29 days prior to arrival, you can still get sorta kinda a refund, but you will have to pay a cancellation fee of $200 per package. And for cancellations made 24 hours or less before your arrival, well, let's just say you're not gonna see that vacation package money again. And that means if the same family of four had that room booked as a vacation package with four days worth of single day park tickets included, they'd wind up losing around $3,280. And in the case of those flight cancellations, policies are gonna differ between airports and airlines, but no matter who you're flying with, it may be beneficial for you to invest in some flight insurance. Yep, insurance will be around five to 10% extra on top of your total flight cost, and you need to read the fine print so you know what it actually covers. But if you do need to back out for a reason that is covered, you'll at least not be out hundreds of dollars, which is definitely the case for these pricey flights lately. With enough advance notice, you may also be able to modify your flight, just like you might be able to do with your Disney Resort stay or tickets. See a pattern here? Your best bet in many of these cases is going to be to try and reschedule to a more convenient travel date. That way, you're not just a no-show who has to pay for all these expenses regardless. But if you're just like, forget this trip, I don't even want to think about it anymore, you'll want to talk to someone who can help walk you through the steps for how to get back as much of your prepayments as possible. That is, if you're struggling to do so currently through the website or the app, because you always want to check online first because those 
Call times can be brutal, but they still allow you to talk to a real life person who might be able to work stuff out for you. And I just recently had a rough experience on an airline app where I tried to use the chat feature to change a flight. And then when I went in to check what had happened, I suddenly had two flights at different times than what I wanted to say. So I ended up having to call anyway and get it sorted out. And and, and that agent was kind of like, well, I don't know what's going on. So if things aren't working online, if there's tech difficulties, then definitely talk to a real person. All right. What about last minute cancellations that you didn't want to make, but were forced to make? Are you still going to have to lose all that money? Well, another way to lose a thousand bucks in Disney World due to mistakes is traveling during the wrong time. Hurricane season can cause your vacation to come to a screeching halt, and that means all your time, energy, and money that's been invested into pulling off the best Disney vacation ever could wind up feeling like a whole bunch of wasted effort. But there's still hope for saving your money and your trip, too. Disney World understands that a hurricane is nobody's fault, and if a hurricane threat is strong enough, Disney will have to close their parks anyways to keep guests and cast members safe. Now, if you've booked all your hotel, ticket, and dining reservations directly through Disney, you should be able to reschedule and modify plans online or by calling 407-939-7675, which will connect you to a Disney cast member who help get things sorted out for you. Vacation packages and dining reservations can be canceled or modified without any additional fees once a hurricane warning has been issued seven days before your arrival date, either in the Orlando area or back in your hometown, because Disney's so not going to want you to travel if your safety is at risk, whatever that may be. As far as the non-Disney travel expenses are concerned, like say your flight, planes are not going to travel when conditions are poor, so keep an eye on your airline app and your email, so you'll know as soon as your flight has been canceled or delayed. You should be able to reschedule for the next available time, or if this trip is just going to wind up being a great big washout and there's no way you're going to be able to make it out to Orlando now, then you can always get a refund or flight credits to use toward a future flight. It all really depends on each airline's policy, so make sure you read up and know what options are available during these circumstances. Last Friday, I was leaving Disney World, flying back to Dallas, and there were tornado warnings in Dallas, and so I was basically told, hey, you can change your flight with no change fees and no costs whatsoever. So even if the flights I was changing to were more expensive, I still got that change for free because of the travel alert and the weather alert. So that was super handy. Now, hurricane season is long. It starts around the beginning of June and lasts until the end of November. Though the area is more prone to see hurricane-like activity between August September and October. But again, this doesn't mean you're guaranteed to run into a hurricane when you plan your vacations around these times. Just keep a close eye on the extended forecast. Keep your options open with your travel group. Look at the fine print. Figure out if it makes sense for you to get travel insurance, etc. just in case alternate plans need to be made. Just be smart. That's all we're saying. Now, whatever happens, Disney can work alongside you to help you figure things out. But if you've booked all your reservations through a third party site, that's when things get a little trickier because Disney's not going to be able to do anything for you if you booked through, say, one of those online booking engines. Instead, you'll have to reach out to that third party you're using to see what their cancellation and refund policies look like when major storms are threatening the area. Now, even if you've heard this next money-saving tip before, please take it to heart because there's a reason it's important enough to share over and over again. I'm not going to stew on this one for long, but please don't forget to look in the special offers, deals, and discounts area on the Disney World website before you start planning that big trip. Though not every discount will directly apply to your specific vacation, it's always worth looking at to see what kind of extra savings Disney's offering up that you can apply to hotel rooms and even vacation packages. And even if you do find something that'll work for you, always read up on the details of the offer because the initial savings you're seeing advertised may not be the exact same savings you can get. For example, there's currently a deal where Guests can save up to $400 on a four-night, four-day room and ticket package, but you can apply the same deal for more or fewer days as needed. The amount of money you're saving also differs depending on what type of room you're booking. So guests might be able to save $100 per night on deluxe resort stays, but only $40 per night on moderate resorts or $20 per night at the value resorts. But hey, savings is still savings, and $20 for seven nights can definitely add up. If you find a super sweet deal after you've already booked your room, you can still apply those savings to your already existing reservation. Just head to the Disney World website, select My Plans under the My Disney Experience section, and scroll over to the Modify Reservation link. 
there you should be able to look for one of the new discounts that's being offered and see if it applies to your trip. If you're on the struggle bus trying to get this to work, don't worry. You can always opt to call the Disney Resort Hotel Reservations line and they'll get things all sorted out for you. Just brace yourself for a potentially long wait. If you're part of a certain hotel membership program, you may also be able to save a ton of money on your upcoming Disney stay, but not through the Disney-owned resorts. I'm talking about the third-party hotels directly on Disney World property. Walt Disney World's Swan and Dolphin Hotel and the Swan Reserve are owned by Marriott, but are within walking distance to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios. As a Marriott Bonvoy member, which by the way is completely free to join, you'll be able to book Swan and Dolphin and Swan Reserve stays at a potentially discounted price. For example, if I were trying to book a room at the Swan Reserve for a six night stay in the middle of January, a flexible member rate would be $435 per night, while a flexible non-member rate would be $449 per night. I know, it doesn't exactly look like the biggest savings ever, but that price doesn't also include the points. If you've collected points through other Marriott-owned hotel stays, you can apply those to your hotel reservation too for even more of a discount. Same goes for the Hilton hotels in the Disney Springs area. If you've gained points through your Hilton Rewards program, you can use your points to book a room and receive a major discount on your overall stay. Now, aside from checking out the special offers, deals, and discounts page on the Disney World website, which, by the way, can easily save you thousands and thousands of dollars, you may be missing out on savings elsewhere if you don't know where to hunt it down. So the next mistake we don't want you to make is paying full price for a deluxe resort stay. If money wasn't an issue, which deluxe resort would you stay in? That's not rhetorical. Let me know the answer in the comments. Whether you're choosing the Tropical Polynesian Village Resort, the European-inspired Riviera, the equestrian Saratoga Springs, all of these high-end resorts are going to come at quite the price point. But before you bite that bullet, we're going to tell you about one other way you can potentially save thousands on your dream Disney World stay, and that's through reliable Disney Vacation Club rental sales. Notice I said reliable on that one. We've got videos that talk extensively about both the history of Disney Vacation Club and the third-party DVC rental sites, which you can check out after this. But I'll give you a brief rundown of both right now so you can see how DVC rentals benefit not just owners, but anyone to book a really nice Disney World stay. You don't have to buy a timeshare program to stay in bigger rooms for less money. So Disney Vacation Club is a timeshare program for Disney guests who frequent the parks often. DVC members will be able to select a home resort, which will determine the amount of yearly vacation points they receive. Vacation points can be spent to book resort stays with the flexibility of when, where, and how long each Disney vacation will be. Again, that's the short version, but it'll do for now. You can go watch our whole DVC video if you want more. Though Disney Vacation Club points can be carried over to the next year, they do eventually expire. And because DVC owners can't just ask for a refund on these points, then these members could be out a whole lot of money. That's where the third party rental sites come into play. Disney Vacation rental sites like our friends over at David's DVC Rental and that's literal, like the person who runs it is a good friend. <laughs> She's awesome, her name's Melissa. They help Disney Vacation Club owners sell their points to non-DVC members looking for a steal of a deal on a deluxe resort stay. According to one of the David's DVC rental representatives that we interviewed for one of our previous DFB posts, you can rent points and get a room for 30 to 50% less than it would cost you to book the room directly through Disney. But let's really drive that visual home for you. During that same interview, the representative pulled a comparison for a room at Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort for two kids and two adults. Booking through Disney World would have cost $5,000, but the same room at the time was only going to cost $2,000 through David's Point Rental Service, a $3,000 difference. This way, the DVC member is able to make some money back from the points that would expire, and the person renting those points or buying those points for that stay is gonna pay less for a bigger room. So it's kind of a win-win. That being said, keep in mind that there are still benefits to booking a room directly through Disney that may be worth the extra price point for you. Depending on the rental site you choose, you may not be able to get a refund once the deal is sealed, no matter how far away your trip still is. Whereas Disney is still gonna let you cancel your stay with a 100% refund as long as you're 30 days out. If you decide not to go with a site like David's, please be wary and do your research to make sure the site you're planning to book through is going to be 100% reliable. Read those reviews, make sure you see some true stories of people who've used them, and check the fine print as well, of course. Now, I know you don't want to hear about this next point, but it's true. This next purchase can end up costing you way more than you realize if you're not careful. 
It's time to talk about alcohol. On average, a specialty Disney alcoholic beverage at any given location is going to cost you between $13 and $19. Again, that's just an estimate. Some cost more, some cost less. You might be able to hit up a happy hour. But if you're looking for something a little fancier and unique to the Disney World property, that's the range you're going to expect to pay for each alcoholic drink. Now, one or two may not be that big of a deal, but if you plan on trying multiple drinks throughout the course of your trip, this little specialty expense could add up big time. Sometimes you don't even realize how much you've actually spent on solely alcohol until you look at your bank statement when you get back home. Not to mention alcoholic beverages might even end up being more expensive if you're at a lounge, bar, or restaurant since you'll also have to figure in tip for your server or bartender. One great way to save money is to order your drinks without the specialty cups and the glow cubes. For example, if you're enjoying a fun beverage at Trader Sam's Grog Grotto in Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, you have the option to purchase your drink with or without the specialty souvenir mug. And that can be a major price hike depending on what you order. For a drink like the Krakatoa Punch made with rum, almond syrup, and hibiscus grenadine, it's one of my favorites, you'll pay 46 bucks for that drink with the souvenir tiki mug. But if you pick to order just the drink, you're only gonna pay $15.50. Same goes for several other selections on this menu, like the ever popular zombie cocktail made with rum, tropical juices, and cinnamon. The drink itself is $14.75, but if you wanna keep that zombie head goblet for yourself, then it'll be $46 for that privilege. This is the same situation over at Oga's Cantina in Hollywood Studios as well and several other locations on property. Glow cubes aren't as dramatic of a price increase as some of these souvenir cup options, but they can still increase the prices of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks by like three or four dollars. So if you're about to order a drink that comes with a glow cube, just say, hey, I don't need the glow cube and you'll get four bucks off your drink. It's a big deal and they don't publicize it. Before you head out for vacation, study up on the different Disney menus and figure out the beverages you really want to prioritize and budget for. Then limit yourself to a certain amount of drinks for the entire trip to keep yourself within that budget. You might also want to throw in some specialty non-alcoholic beverages to cut down that cost, but to still get something fun and tasty and exclusive to Disney World property. Now, it's a lot of menus to study up on, so good thing you've got a handy dandy Disney food blog site to rely on for some drink suggestions, right? To help you start your search, here are some of our favorite places places to score a drink on Disney World property. The Enchanted Rose at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is a classy Beauty and the Beast themed setting with light and smooth cocktails such as the Lavender Fog made with gin, Creme de Violet, English Breakfast Tea, Vanilla and Cream for around $19. La Cava del Tequila at Epcot's Mexico Pavilion is an intimate space with a drink menu for tequila fans everywhere. With tequila flights and margs like the La Cava Avocado made with tequila, melon liqueur, fresh avocado and lime juice for $17. Bucks. You would swear there's banana in there, but there isn't. Boma at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge not only has an African-inspired buffet for breakfast and dinner, but also some unique cocktails like the $16 morning exclusive offering, the striped and spiked cold brew made with Joffrey's French roast, South African Amarula cream liqueur, Godiva chocolate liqueur, whipped cream, and it's all topped off with a zebra dome mousse, which is delicious all on its own. And since I just spent a few hours at Nomad Lounge last week, let's skip talking about that one again, although they've got some awesome drinks there, and we'll talk about the Dole Whip float with rum that you can find over at Tamu Tamu Refreshments in the Africa section of Animal Kingdom for around $13. And don't even get me started on Disney Springs. Disney Springs not only has fun and fancy cocktails featured at lots of their restaurants, but they've also got those happy hour offerings. Restaurants and bars like Frontera Cocina, Paradiso 37, Wine Bar George, Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, and several other Disney Springs locations have major savings on some alcohol and appetizer offerings throughout the week. You can track these offerings down on the Disney World website, or you can see them all featured in one nifty location in our 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. But the point here is that if you spend too much on alcohol, it's going to affect you more than just the next morning. It is going to affect your bottom line and your bank account. So be sure to check out that pricing beforehand and choose some specific ones you definitely want to try and go easy on it the rest of the time. Now, unfortunately, you'll rarely take a Disney World vacation where your budget's going to look exactly the same as your last trip to the parks. And this next point is one of the key factors as to why that is. Booking a trip when the prices are sky high is a major mistake you don't want to make. Depending on when you're planning your Disney World vacation, you're either going to get a pretty decent deal or you're going to be paying top dollar for hotels and park tickets. So we already talked about going during hurricane season and why that's not necessarily a great idea. But there are other seasons in Disney World, expensive seasons, seasons when everything just costs exponentially more than it usually does. So here's a quick visual for you. 
Let's say a family of four with two adults, two kids is wanting to book a seven night vacation package for a Finding Nemo suite at Disney's Art of Animation Resort, including four days worth of single day park tickets. If you book this package between September 18th and September 24th for next year, you're looking at spending around $5,700. But if you book the very same package for Christmas week in 2023 between December 24th and December 30th, you'll be paying $7,700 instead, literally a $2,000 difference. Sometimes booking a vacation during the most wonderful time of the year just can't be helped, especially when you want to experience all the different Christmas offerings Disney World has at hand. But if your main goal is to see Disney World regardless of the season, while saving as much money on a vacation as physically possible, consider planning your trip around one of Disney's slower seasons for a lower price point. The cheapest time of the year to book a trip in 2023 is going to fall into back to school season at the end of August and throughout the month of September. But there are select days throughout January that also feature lower than average Disney prices. For a better idea of how expensive your trip could be, visit the Disney World ticket price calendar. They've already got price points listed for the entirety of 2023, and you're gonna see those value regular and peak seasons right in there. And surge pricing doesn't just impact Disney World, it impacts lots of travel-based purchases. And that goes for this next point that you might've swept under the rug. Let's talk about transportation. Let's say you're flying into Orlando International Airport for the holidays. Even if you aren't, picture yourself flying into any airport for the holidays because this applies outside the Disney World property too. We're all about real life experiences here, you know. You totally expect to just pick up a rental car when you land, but when you do land, not only are those rental car lines super long, but you're also hearing down the grapevine that most of them are sold out already. And the ones that are left are those super expensive models that are gonna cost you a lot more than you were expecting to pay. So what are you gonna do? Well, rental cars can be really great to have on your vacation. They give you the freedom to drive where you want, when you want, even when your own vehicle is still chilling out back home. But unfortunately, you're gonna have to pay a hefty price for that convenience, and much like a flight, that price is gonna fluctuate depending on when you're traveling and how high the demand is. So let's say I wanna rent a car from Hertz at MCO for the week of December 1st to the 8th. My cheapest option currently is gonna be a small sedan, which can fit up to five passengers. If I pay for it in full right now, I'm paying $382 and 99 cents. But if I reserve it now and decide to pay for it when I arrive, I'd be paying $498 and 75 cents. However, let's say my cheapest options all book up, then there's a very good chance I could be left to book a seven passenger SUV for the week, which would give me lots more space than I need and put me back about $1,327 or over $1,400 if I decide to pay for it later on. Now, Alamo tends to have similar options. Right now, your cheapest options for a rental the same time, December 1st to the 8th, would be a mid-sized Toyota Corolla for about $415 if you pay for it today. Don't be fooled, you may see a lower price at first, but once the taxes and surcharges and fees are tacked on, it'll push that cost an extra 100 bucks at least. Same goes for pretty much any car rental location, so watch out. But if you're stuck getting an SUV because all the other options are out, you could wind up paying $1,426 when you pay for it the day of your arrival. And that's only the bare basics. If you wanna tack on anything else like damage waivers, insurance, roadside assistance, car seats, or other rental enhancements, you're looking at even more add-ons that could range from 66 to $210 on top of what you're already paying. So to help cut back on higher car rental prices, especially as the holiday season keeps getting closer, book your rental in advance through either a reliable travel rental company or straight through the car rental site itself. Travel rental companies may be able to give you a better deal, but keep in mind that cancellation policies could be tricky. So at the risk of sounding like a broken record, do your research. Making reservations for a car rental ahead of time is also gonna help guarantee you a rental car in the first place. Around the holidays, last minute rentals can sell out and you might find yourself out of luck. Okay, maybe not completely out of luck. Rideshare services will always be available to you like Uber and Lyft. Download those apps to your phone before your trip just in case you need a quick ride for an extra fee. But a great way to save potentially hundreds of dollars on a car rental is with certain memberships like Landry Select Club and AARP. They can hook you up with discounts for future rentals too, so don't forget to look into the details of those membership programs. I've also used hotel points membership programs, airline membership programs to get discounts on various car rentals. You don't have to use your points to book them. They just offer you a discount on car rentals as part of the membership. So absolutely look into those things. If you're a member of anything, see if they have a car rental option available. And one of my favorite places to go research this stuff is mousesavers.com. Head over there. They've got all of the car rental discount 
codes listed so you can just grab one of those and use it if you're a member of any of those particular membership programs. Now, if you really are staying on Disney World property during your trip and you don't plan on leaving the Disney bubble once you're there, you can always stick with using Disney's complimentary transportation to get you to the parks and resorts and Disney Springs. This may not give you the travel freedom you were hoping for and you may have to wait a little longer on those Disney buses to take you from place to place, but it could help you save hundreds just to get you from point A to point B. But definitely check those car rental prices because sometimes what you're going to pay for Mirrors Connect could be more than you'd pay for a car rental, depending on how many people you have in your family. So do the math. But renting a vehicle for too much isn't the only big rental regret you could make during your vacation. Let's talk about your hotel next. There are over 20 different Disney World hotels you can book for your upcoming trip, and each of those resorts is vastly different from the next. Variety is great, but each resort model has its pros and cons, so it's important to not just book the first hotel you stumble across or the one that your Aunt Susan says is the best one or the one that all the guys in the accounting department said they liked. Your trip is not their trip and your family is not their family. We've got a video that talks in detail about each available Disney-owned hotel, ranks them even, gives you all the pros and cons. But for now, I'm just gonna give you a brief pros and cons list for the three different resort types, value, moderate, and deluxe. If you're staying at a value resort, these hotels are gonna be your cheapest Disney-owned option. They're gonna have some of the most vibrant and colorful character inspiration throughout their lobbies, rooms, and food court locations, so kids are gonna feel immersed in the Disney scene the moment they step out of the car. However, value resorts are also going to provide the fewest amenities and on-site activities. Dining options are pretty limited, and if you're looking for something on the classier side of things for a honeymoon or anniversary, all these in-your-face characters may not be the vibe you're looking for. Now, if you're staying at a moderate resort, you're going to get a nice middle ground here. You'll be paying a little more than you would at a value resort, but you'll also be paying less than you would at an expensive deluxe. The moderate resorts have vastly different vibes from one another, aside from the two neighboring Port Orleans resorts, but each one will offer up a more elevated stay than the value resorts will. That being said, these moderate resorts can be sprawling, so getting to different amenities, pools, restaurants, lobbies, and transportation stops can be a trek. And though Port Orleans French Quarter is the smallest hotel of the moderate resort lineup, you'll still have to travel all the way over to either Disney Springs or Port Orleans Riverside Resort if you're looking for a nice sit-down meal. And if you're staying at a deluxe resort, you're staying at Fancy Pants Central, where you'll be rolling in the different hotel perks, including the extended evening hours benefit that's only available for deluxe resort guests and allows you to stay in the parks up to two hours after they close to the rest of the public on certain nights at certain parks. However, you can probably fill in the blanks for what I'm about to say next. These resorts are super expensive, like between $600 and $1,000 plus per night. They can also be less character driven depending on which one you stay at, which can be disappointing for the younger folks in your group. So no pressure, right? Just make sure you and your group are all on the same page for what kind of resort is gonna feel the most worthy of your hard earned cash so you don't experience buyer's regret later on. Do you wanna spend lots of time in the hotel and really soak it up and experience it? Or do you wanna spend most of your day in the parks and just sleep at the hotel? That's the classic Disney conundrum and it's one you wanna talk about before you book. All right, so we know spending money can be painful no matter what, but losing thousands of dollars before or during your Disney World vacation for things that you could have fixed is bound to leave a sour taste in your mouth toward what was supposed to be a fun-filled trip for the books. So hopefully these tips are gonna help you bite these extra expenses in the bud before they get out of hand, or at the very least help to give you a better understanding of how you can work around those in a way that'll make your credit card applaud your efforts. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.